What's up, y'all? Sparta here. So, for this, I guess I just want to talk more about, um, I guess my, uh, my disappointment in how smartphone conversations have shifted. Right. And this is something that I feel is emblematic to how more and more tech reviewing, phone reviewing in particular is becoming less and less relevant. It's becoming less and less of a thing people rely on. It's becoming something that more people are gravitating towards because they want validation for their purchase, right? Not because they want to genuinely know what a phone can do over the phone that they currently have or the phone that they're thinking about getting. It used to be about that in like the early Android, early iPhone, early Windows phone days. But now it's become this (laughs) pissing contest over what phone isn't as good as a Samsung phone, what phone isn't as good as an iPhone what phone is outdated compared to this phone in terms of these particular specs? What phones am I worried about not being as good because it doesn't have a Snapdragon 865 but a 765? It's something that I feel more and more people, and sorry, my mom is deciding to play music loud with her speaker right now. So if you hear a little bit of that, apologies, but... Is becoming less about the product and self product product itself and what that product can do and what that can offer for a particular amount of people and more about this doesn't do this so it's not as good this doesn't do that so get this phone instead this phone doesn't fold so get this phone instead the average cons- the average consumer just won't like this phone so get this phone instead it is becoming <laughs> it's it, ooh, it's becoming something that i feel is more about buy popular phone because popular phone will actually sell rather than buy the phone that's right for you because that's what matters it's no secret that i'm an lg person right I have been using LG since the LG G2. Technically Nexus 4, but LG with LG software, LG hardware, G2. And uh, now the G2X that they made, the, the, the regular LG G2, the, op, the successor to the Optimus G. And this is something that I've noticed slowly. The, the smartphone conversation has slowly deteriorated. To just, back then, people would say stuff like, the megapixels don't matter. They would say something like, it's more more than just the software behind the camera. It's more than just the capabilities of what the camera can do. It's how well these particular parameters are met, right? And now it's just... 108 megapixel sensor, everybody should have that. 120 hertz display, everybody should have that. Quad HD 120 hertz, everybody should have that. Samsung takes the micro SD card out, everyone should do that. Everyone should take out the headphone jack. Everyone should do this. Everyone should limit the charging current on their phones. Like it, It's become less of a flagship conversation which I'm totally fine with, right? I'm totally fine with us deviating from solely talking about flagships, but the problem is that these tech reviewers are pushing flagships as if literally everybody buys them. It's the enthusiasts that buy them. It's me that buys them. I bought a V60 because it was the next V-series phone. I bought the S20 FE because... I needed my Note 10 is essentially dead until I get it repaired. 
and I and I wanted a Samsung phone for reference until I get the S21 Ultra, right? There's a lot of things as to why I do this. Not only because I have a YouTube channel, it's because it, it a lot of it is because I just genuinely like tech. You know, I've had two phones way before I had a YouTube channel. I was I was testing these things out before all of this. I was maximizing the performance out of my phone before these things. And far too much, these tech reviewers are doing one thing, and they're doing it terribly. They're advocating for the average consumer when they know goddamn well the average consumer is not buying an S21 Ultra for $1,400. They're not buying... They're not buying a Z Fold 2 or Z Fold 3 for $2,000, almost $2,000. They're not doing that shit. They're not. So can you please tell me, can you please tell me, why is it so hard to just do, to do your job right? You're not an advocate, you're not an advocate, you Ugh, you're not an advocate, advocate, advocate for shit. You're not. <laughs> you, essentially, you become a mouthpiece for a company. A lot of you just get paid and get sent the device or just get sent the device. So you have some sort of bias over it and you get a million views and that pay and that pays you that pays your bills for that month. And honestly, it's getting to the point where I don't care what people think, what I say. I like th- this ain't a job for me. I don't have to lose. I don't have anything to lose with this. It's just getting very tiresome to constantly have fanboys come to my videos and say the V60. LG's the Walmart of phones and dumb shit like that, right? Like these sheep ass people. I was like, I don't go to a Samsung enthusiast channel and constantly tell Samsung people that their phones are trash and they're constantly getting worse because Samsung is taking out features that they're taking out MST, they're taking out MagStripe, they're putting ads on top of Samsung pay. They're putting all this free shit on your phone so they can put ads on it. There's ads in the fucking game launcher. There's like, there's a lot of like, I don't come, I don't go to a Samsung channel and say that. Do I, I don't go to an Apple channel and say the camera is trash lens dots and lens flares everywhere. The, the dynamic HDR is trash because it looks like it looks holographic when you shift it left to right. The 4K60 is fine, but the stabilization is complete garbage on it. The mics aren't as good as other phones. I don't go there and say that, do I? No, I keep it to my channel. And people that buy those phones like those phones, they can buy and like the phones. I don't care. I don't care. I really don't care. My problem is is always, and this is like my third rant. (laughs) I'm uploading two videos right now. The first one was solely about this whole notion that a, a, a 12 megapixel sensor is outdated, so don't use it. And if you have a phone with a 12 megapixel sensor that's brand new, you're buying phones wrong. And you're not getting the best of the best out there because it's not a 108 megapixel sensor. And the the hypocrisy of saying that while in the same fucking breath saying, I want the video quality that comes out of an iPhone. It, it... The second one is more talking about computational photography and the overall, this notion that if a phone doesn't have computational photography on par with something like a pixel or something like an iPhone that it's just not doing anything for you. But then in the same breath, you also say the the phone doesn't give me enough control over what I want to do. How do you want control over these things? Right. 
but you also want the phone to do everything for you. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. I could go on and on about this, right? I can sit here and say that this tech reviewer is trash, that tech reviewer is trash, but I I genuinely don't think that. I, I don't think they're shills. I don't think they're just doing it for the paycheck. I really don't. But I feel tech reviewing has honestly just gotten lazy, right? Like, there's a select few people out there that review, that actually review for the average consumer. I think Jay Williams does a really good job at looking at lower end phones and saying what they can do compared to their higher end counterparts, right? He does a very good job at that. I feel that Juan Bagnell sits to actually gives you good arguments as to why you should use your phone as more than just a phone. But people want this middle ground where they want the phone to do everything for them, but they don't want to learn how to use the phone. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry, but every time I've used an iPhone, from the 12 Pro Max to the 11 Pro Max to the 10s to the 8 Plus, a lot of shit in their camera app is not intuitive. How how you set exposure is not intuitive compared to what you can do on a V60, where you tap the screen, an exposure bar comes up, and you can slide it down or up. And this is an auto mode. This isn't going into manual the manual mode. And the kicker with that is they also give you an option to manually focus in auto mode. So if the phone is just not getting focused, you can do that too. I'm not understanding it. Do they not dig into these phones a little bit deeper anymore? Do they just not do that? Sometimes I feel like reviewing a reviewing a flagship phone for an average consumer just doesn't make sense they're not going to use dex they're not going to need the power that is 865 at 855 even an 845 can give you let alone an 888 <laughs> like it's not giving like you're not getting much they're not doing much but the same stuff And I'm not disparaging them for that. But I don't feel that getting a flagship phone just to check Facebook, just to go on Instagram, just to take pictures, is really that beneficial. Because guess what? You can get a flagship phone with a 108 megapixel camera and still take hot garbage photos. You can. (laughs) You can get a $150 phone and take amazing photos. There are people that sit right beside pers- people with dedicated cameras and take better pictures than the people with the dedicated cameras. It's not about the tech. It's not about the equipment all the time. Sometimes it's just about the person who's doing it. It's just about the person who is utilizing the tool. And to me, it's become far more about how how much less we can make, how, how much more we can make the individual reliant on the software rather than them learning about how to use the phone. This is something that I feel Apple kind of fucked up. Where Apple kind of fucked up with. I feel like this is their fault. Where Samsung used to li- used to be about. We give you more control over shit. Then after the Note 4, they took out manual mode. Just to bring it back two years later. 
<laughs> oh wait, no, no, that's not what happened. I think they took. I, I think after the Note Five, they took it out, then brought it back with the Note Eight or Note Nine, I think, and then try to act like we're for the pros, pro level camera. It's like. You see how they fleece you? For the basics, you could get a LG K7 or whatever it's called, or the Samsung Galaxy A71, and you can get the vast majority of what these flagship phones offer without the chipset. With Samsung, you'll still get three years of software support. You'll still get... All of those things. You just won't get the latest and greatest chipset. Well, you won't get the latest and greatest high-end chipset. Anyway. With LG, you'll still get a headphone jack on a Stilo 6. You'll still get a big battery. You'll still get a stylus. You'll still get all that stuff on a Stilo 6. You just won't get a Snapdragon 865 or an 888. And still get amazing battery life. We've seen these companies take more and more out of our phones. And we're doing nothing about it. You just become complacent. You know Samsung is going to take it out the mo- take something out the moment they make fun of Apple for taking it out. But you, but, but you buy the phones anyway. You buy them anyway. And to me, that's that's not right. That's it's just not right. You can't say, "Oh, this is bad," but then reward Samsung with your money. I at least buy the phones you buy the phones off Swappa and give the money to somebody else. Even though the phone is still brand new, I'm just giving a thousand bucks to somebody else. Like <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not going to give Samsung my money just because they just said, oh, we give you $100 credit for these cute little accessories that we should have just put in the box anyway. Like, no, 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 not happening, bro. You're not about, you're not about to get me. You're not about to get me with that. And it's sad. Because it make it, honestly, seeing what Samsung did with the S21 and S21 Ultra made me jaded on a phone I like. The S20 FE. (laughs) It made me jaded on the phone that I actually like. And then I started noticing stuff that they took out. The moment I go back to an S20, the moment I look at the S21 and go to the S20 FE, you know what I see? Oh, when I go into manual mode and take a picture, it saves both the JPEG and the RAW on the internal storage, and I can't change that. Oh, 4K 60fps video in any sort of aspect ratio, whether it's in auto mode or manual pro video mode, it saves it on the internal storage, and I can't change that. Now I could just swap them over after the fact to the SD card, but it's not the point. Every single LG phone that I've had that has had the ability to save video on the SD card, the highest quality video on the SD card was able to do it. Every single RAW file and every single JPEG saved on the SD card. Not this half-ass shit. And people are becoming far too complacent with this. They really are. And, um, (sighs) to me, it just becomes this (laughs) never-ending cycle of bash, bash this phone company for not doing this thing, and then somebody else come and defend that company because they're doing these other things that those companies aren't doing, but because this phone looks bland, quote-unquote, which is a very subjective fucking thing. (laughs) Like, you may not like the look of an Xperia 1 Mark II, but goddammit, do I. (laughs) I like the bezels. Give me the bezels. (laughs) 
I like the monolithic look. Give me that. That obelisk look. I like that shit. Give me that. They have all these things. Like a pro video mode that looks like an actual camera. Like. A, a programmable auto mode that gives you all the stuff that you would want. They give you a basic bitch auto mode for those kind of photos. They give you a, they give you very good autofocus. <laughs> they give you very good photo quality. They like, they give you a four K display, something nobody is doing. They give like. Well, because they don't have 120 hertz, that's the problem, right? It's always a small player. LG is the only one that's still holding out with a headphone jack with a hi-fi quad deck. It's not their technology. It's not as if only LG could use a quad deck, right? LG doesn't own ESS. The quad deck isn't theirs. But they've been, they've literally been the only one that have used it. There have been other companies that have used other hi-fi DACs that are less sophisticated, less intricate, and less complicated to use. Thus, in certain situations, they may perform better, not necessarily better, but easier than what the quad DAC can do. And they may have higher, they, they may have, you know, amps that can be driven louder, but... Overall, LG is still the only one that is held out. Who knows what they're going to do this year? Who knows? But because they've been putting out true wireless earbuds, true wireless he wireless headsets, and kept stuff like a headphone jack. So I don't necessarily see them being like, oh, the headphone jack just doesn't make us money. So we're just going to take that out. It just becomes something that I just don't feel is fun anymore, right? Because for, for every single person that likes the content that I do on an LG phone... There's that other person that sits there and acts as if every single person has to talk about a fucking Samsung phone. Or that everyone has to do a fucking Pixel. Like, or everyone has to do a fucking Nexus. It's like... It just doesn't make sense. I saw this comment on this video, on this Austin Evans video... Where somebody said, and I'll bring it up just so I can um, tell you guys what exactly the comment is. I don't want to hear you. Honestly, Google should go up to LG and Sony and say, well, LG do the audio. Sony, you do the camera and we'll do the software. <laughs> it's like... So less competition then, eh? Like, that's essentially what I want to say. And the software on this fucking S20 FE decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into one-handed mode. Whatever. Um... It, it's stupid. It's just stupid, yo. Like, that's all I really want to say with this. Um, it's more of a ranty thing. Apologies for that if you don't like that, but I'm just disappointed. I'm not even mad. I'm just disappointed, which some people may see as worse, right? I'm not just mad, son. I'm disappointed. And, you know, it sucks. It really does. There used to be a time when tech reviewers wanted more out of their phones, right? Now they're just complacent. For companies to take less, take more out of their phones and give them less for more money. There was a time where Samsung made a one terabyte S10 Plus, right? Where is that now? 
You don't ask for that. Well, no, but 512 is good enough. 512 for fourteen hundred dollars, whereas the S10 Plus at one terabyte, I think, was twelve hundred. Yeah, that's 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 enough. That's 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 totally fine. S twenties, where all three S twenties had quad HD one twenty hertz displays. The only differences were size, battery, and cameras. Like <laughs> now, it's. 1080p display, 1080p 120 hertz displays on the S21 and S21 Plus, and on, and they're plastic backed, which personally I don't care about, but, but the S21 Ultra, this is the big booty phone, this has the S Pen, this has the frosted glass back, we have this new phantom black. We finally figured out we invented the color true black. So look at this. Like, it's become this thing where they're literally taking stuff away from the smaller phones, making them a compromise so you go up to the higher phone. And you guys just take it. At least with the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, it's like, you're not missing much. It's like, you're really not. You're missing battery life and a slightly larger 12 megapixel camera. That's all you're missing. And obviously screen size. But you're not missing much. You're still getting the same frosted bag. You're still getting the same design. You're still getting a lot of that stuff. Whereas Samsung is just short-changing the S21 so you can get the S21 Plus. Short-changing the S21 Plus so you get the S21 Ultra. The, that's what they're doing. And the kicker, they don't even give you an SD card option on the Ultra. So they don't even piecemeal you with that. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. But that's all I really want to say with this. Uh, have a good one, you guys.